you know, folks, sometimes my glutton for punishment stuff lives up to its name very well. And I'm not going to lash out. I'm just going to sit here and calmly observe. There is someone among us in this world who alleges I'm a failure. Who alleges it because allegedly I'm not stable on meds. Because I'm not on meds and stabilized. Well, I've been cleared of needing any medications. I'm so stable that a horse stable looks unstable. If that makes any sense to you, then you understand my reference there. By the way, it is incredibly difficult. Some of the tasks I take on, a lot of the tasks I take on I look for difficult tasks. Why? Because challenging myself to improve is where it's at. There is someone in this world who claims that I'm allegedly a bad person and I am okay, but at the same time, it bothers me and bothers me because I know this person. I know this person so well, I'm observing him and remembering my observations as far back as I can remember. This person had started smoking at 13, allegedly quit smoking over a year ago, but I know that person is still drinking, guaranteed. This person person drunk texts me all the time. When I ask this person to ask me some questions, this person says, you need meds. You need to get your mentality stabilized. I'm sitting here. Calm as can day and that person did text me in the middle of this video. He knows who he is. The person is someone that secretly I've always been closer to than I've been willing to admit. It's tough to see your own, the people you know around you sink deeper and deeper into the abyss of addiction. This person thought it was tough when I went through my addictions, watching me go through mine. Meanwhile, there he was going through his own addictions. He's on more antidepressants. And he's on more drugs than... And I don't care. I don't care if they're legal or not. My doctors and I are on the same page. We're literally singing the same, we're playing the same music on the same sheet. And the tough part is, this person who I have known for over two decades, so I was literally knee high to a grasshopper, quite literally, figured out. 
watched him sink deeper and deeper into an abyss. The most challenging thing I've taken on in my life is leaving an open door of communication, willing to answer questions and ignore demands. I'm not a person who answers demands. I'm a person who answers requests, demanding me to get back on medications will put me right back into addiction. I guarantee it. The addiction that he watched me go through started because this person talked me into prescription drugs. This is the same person who whilst I can't prove it took another person off the face of the earth that I was near and dear to. It's extremely difficult, folks. It's extremely difficult. But I forgive this person for what they did. It's not supposed to be easy. Life is not easy. There's a section in a book. I'm going to pause the video a minute. I'll be right back with that book. This book is very widely known as the second book, the book of the witnesses of the second uh, resurrection of Christ. When Jesus Christ was, when Jesus Christ arose from the dead, he went to a different area. And Brass plates were found in New York. Well, what is now New York, but way back at that time, it wasn't New York. So, this one is something that really comes close to home for me and it came at just the right time today. And, you know, more people need to be willing to pull out scriptures more often. And, it, whilst I can be called a Bible humper and a, or a Bible thumper or whatever you want to do, call me. And whilst I do carry an electronic Bible in my back pocket, I do so quietly and understanding that not everyone is into it. But those those who are willing, they do Definitely get to have conversations with me about it. And through the scriptures, we can find eternal peace and happiness. There is no drug that will bring that, regardless of legality. This, unfortunately, is where I challenge the prophecy. Still pulling it up right quick. It's just poor lighting in a poorly designed apartment. Need I say more? 
by the way, there's going to be an entire channel created based on what my experience was like here and other places. But neither here nor there. Continuing back to where I was. So, the Lamanites and the Lamanites continuously were making observation of the Nephites. And this particular observation was made at about somewhere between 50 and 30, and somewhere between the year 50 and 30 before Christ. So between 50 and 30 years before Christ, this is exactly what they observed. And I'm just, I'm going to condense a 30 minute lecture down to a 10 minute lecture here. So, glancing through this chapter, and mind you, these were all very accurate, accurate translations. And they're very sound and solid trans translations. So the Lamanites were noticing the Nephites as a, in general, with the exception of Nephi, as talked about by Nephi in the first and second books. The Nephites kept on this wavelength of down and up and down and up and down. Well, here's what was going on. And the Nephites were saying that it was because of themselves that they were rich. And that they were... That they were successful because of themselves when we are successful because of Christ as people on earth. Everything is successful because of Christ and more specifically God. So something I want to bring up here is because the, Lam the Lamanites were observing the Nephites would become rich and would quit giving God the credit and Jesus because they quit giving God credit for their success, they would be brought down by lust and ultimately the devil. And then they'd be humbled, get in touch with Christ, me, you know, find God again. After they found would find God, they'd get rich again and they'd just fall back into Satan's hands and and the root of it was they thought that because they were wealthy that it was all because of themselves and nobody around them ever helped them. But you don't acquire money by gathering it all on your own. You can get wealthy for a short time by stealing it. However, to steal is to sin. To refuse credit where credit is due is to and to, to be complacent. And when you get complacent, you pretty much just kind of fall into the wrong hands and you fall in with the wrong crowd. Now, let me make this clear. I have lost tens of thousands of dollars because of 
not following God's commandments and God's will. Now, I have all but the taxes that I've paid on my money sitting in my storage locker. All of it. Not in the form of cash, but in the form of assets. Now, my, my current situation of the money coming my way, all of my assets are holding their value very well. Another thing to remember here, folks, is from seeing the struggle and how greatly it affected my life and how long it took me to recover from it and how long it's taking me to continue to recover from it. I have physically and spiritually healed from it. I have by far and large, mentally healed from it. Doctors approve of that. And just hate to say it, but financially, I'm still working on recovering. I got stuck in a rough situation here at my place of residence. It's incredibly difficult for anyone be able to judge me when they have thousands of dollars coming in every month. I have family members who as households are bringing in over $5,000 a month. When you're making of a household 95 grand a year to me I really would love to have someone with that kind of money sitting aside assist me knowing it'll come back to help them in the end Lately, in most of my videos, I've been linking how to do so into the comments and down in the comment, or not in the comment, but the description box for a reason. And I really ask you folks, because I really, it wouldn't be good if I needed just, if I actually sold my Harley at this time. The reason it wouldn't be good is because, as much as I hate to say it, it's extremely, extremely true. Some people would be really happy, like an evil level of happy, to see that bike sell. It is listed. I really am doing my best because I'm waiting on an offer to come in. I'm waiting on more money to come in, in general. I've got money set aside. I'm playing this game called the waiting game. It's difficult. It's unfortunate. And it's difficult, but I'm learning a lot of lessons from it. I'm seeing what kind of people are actually watching me. The unfortunate thing, folks, lust is a dangerous thing to play with. And there are people who lust to see me sell a valuable asset. They are, they are 
really upset that I bought it. They're upset that I still have it in my possession. The reason my price is set at 12.5 is not because I don't want to sell it. But right now, the time of the filming of this video, I just rolled over the 150th mile yesterday when I wrote it on camera. It just passed the break-in period. And I'm just going to put it this way. I prefer to keep the bike so as not to fuel them on. I'm also working on building my own empire based on helping people in need. And I'm just going to be very frank, very blunt. I really, I seldom ever ask for help. Look down in the description box if you're, if you can spare some money. So without it, this content's not possible, quite literally. I've only received five dollars in donations this month, and I have literally. Over a hundred ten dollar deficit in my budget. I'm very appreciative of the five dollar donation. However, I'm I'm hoping some people can help me to buy me some more time financially. That next chunk of change is in the works. It's a very difficult private contract. And I'm not telling you exactly what it is at this time because I legally am unable to. Because it pretty much is private and confidential at the same time. And the reason it's both private and confidential at this time sadly has a lot to do with the circumstances I'm under. And I promise you, when the contract is completed, I'll disclose fully what went on. And I guarantee you, I'll pay it forward. Because at this time, it's really, really rough. And I really, I prefer not to take handouts if I can avoid it. And there's a very detailed story as to what led up to this entire situation. Starting with my rent coming a buck or two shy of actually doubling. And the reason it doubled you know, that it came a buck or two shy from doubling. It's because of incompetence in paperwork. Incompetence in obeying laws of the management of a place I'm renting from. And for the record, I'm planning on moving. I'm on a waiting list. I just need some help. Currently, financially, soon, I'll pick up and trailer to help me move. Because I don't know that I can count on my family to help me without stealing from me. That's the worst part of it all. 
trusting them is tough. It really is. Especially after the damage they've all done. The person I've been that I talk have talked about in this video is watching. May this person know I still love them. Much like you have a tough time trusting me, I have a tough time trusting you. Some of you knew how knew you were blessed with the family you grew up in. Some of you that knew that had no idea to what extent. Folks, quite literally, I'm almost 100% on my own in this one. I only have one kind neighbor and my church members that are able to help. But I'd rather do something to earn it. What I need right now is not a loan. What I need is some earnings to get me by. It is not easy. Life is not easy. However, if you're able, Help me keep man, putting food on the table. Not to make you feel guilty, but let it go. Let me pause that video a minute. Gives whole new meaning to doing what I'm able just to put bread on the table. That is, that is literally what I've got left for today's ration of bread. And Put it lightly, I've actually began to break into my emergency rations of food. This is the only fresh food I get anymore. Bagels. That is a new low. When you're working your butt off to help people breaking into your emergency rations of food and this is your freshest food a bagel I've two bagels a day as my ration I've sat and stared at this bagel since lunch Cooking meals from emergency rations. You don't know what it's like unless you've been there. Literally, bread being your freshest food. The only food I can currently afford That's literally about all I can afford at the grocery store. Is a bag of fresh bagels every second or third day. Usually every third day. This is a whole new meaning to the rich have no clue what they do to people in poverty. It has nothing to do with me not being willing to sign a lease. It has everything to do with the fact 
that the place that wants me to sign a lease to resume the tenancy, the agreement of HUD, where I've already completed my first lease, they want me to complete another to continue it, claiming they'll be in violation of the law if I don't sign another lease, and they give me my HUD back. That is not what the law says. What the law states in subsidized housing is you only need to complete your first one year at least contract and you can be kept on HUD. This is the only place I've ever lived at that's demanded anything like that misquoting a law in an attempt to scare me. They say you can break the lease at this place really easy. It's not. They don't fix anything. They jerry-rigged my toilet when it broke. Who jerry-rigs a toilet and ignores a water heater that's faulty? I fixed that because management, after watching them fix my toilet, I didn't even trust them to look at my water heater, let alone touch it. A coat hanger to fix the toilet when it needs new internals. I'm not going to go any further. I can't. I can't go further into what's going on here. It's ridiculous. Because it leaves me struggling to be able to afford these as I tap into my emergency rations. Just because this place of tenancy doubled my rent. Why they didn't just make it two bucks more or a buck more. Why they didn't just bring it exactly to double. It's just so they could say we didn't double his rent. It went from X to Y and that is a buck or two short of doubling. When I was arrested, same crap had happened immediately after. And the case was dismissed without prejudice because of lack of evidence. The rich who mm, are against poverty and say that poverty people need to just go get a job don't even know. They don't even care. Rating, commenting, subscribing, ringing the bell, it all helps. Help me get my channels to monetization and it levels. I won't monetize them. I just want to prove to people that to you guys, I'm worth it. I'm worth your time. Tell you the truth, you subscribers are what actually keeps me going on a daily basis. Through God, I see it is all of you praying for me as I go through my difficult situation. I flip open my laptop four days out of the week, working on my new channel. That has been a little while coming. Help has been coming, but I need even more than what's been coming. It sucks. Think before you speak, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Think before you act. Think about what would happen if you went into their shoes genuinely and were genuinely in their shoes.